What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking about Friday's MLB slate. Uh, Sheets had a great night two nights ago, a good night last night, it sounds like he had. I had a good night last night and uh, ready to get after it on a big Friday. So, uh, Sheets, uh, I, I came in third in the 88. I, I finished 20 in the 20s, and you, you beat me in this, this, the 777 or 888 or whatever it was last night. You were up to 13th. So, we had the right stuff. We played a little. We obviously had to eat the chalk in order to be somewhat right. But my 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 Chapman and my Blue Jays, uh, along with my Dodgers, were enough to to get me there. And uh, the Alex Wood Otani thing worked out well enough. So sometimes you you can win you can win with chalk. Uh, what can I say? But today we're going to be going off the board a little bit because there's so many good choices um, and so much to choose from. Anyway, Sheets, talk about how talk about your night, and uh, then we'll get into it. Yeah, you know it's interesting. Um, I. Uh... I was I was thinking of ways to get different, and and you you heard me struggling about this, you know that that the Dodgers is rated just so much higher than everybody else. I just I, I wasn't I just wasn't going to fade them. So what my question is, what to do with those, you know, to, with those the, with the rest of my lineup, right? If I was going to do four or five man Dodger stack, or what I was going to do, and I was toying around with the idea, as you might recall, of maybe playing three Texas guys. You know what I mean against against Totani to get leverage that way. Yeah. I ended up getting being a little more conservative, and what I did was, um, was I kind of attacked uh, which with the Toronto pitcher a little bit, uh, who was going to get a little bit of ownership at least, uh, a Kikuchi. Um, I thought Kikuchi might would be high owned, so I played a couple of Tigers, and uh, and I got solo home runs out of, out of out of two of them, you know, out of Scope and Castro to mm-hmm. uh, to to complement my Dodger stack. And I'll tell you something that was real. What's funny though about the way baseball works, you know, Otani was eighty four percent owned in seven seventy seven, and and and. He had the bases loaded, nobody out in the first inning. I know. I know. I mean, but, but, <laughs> you, you, you weren't around when I ended up doing live. What I ended up doing on my on my seven seventy seven on 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 Fanduel, I, I did play two Texas bats. I played like thirty percent of my stacks had at least two Texas players in it or three Texas players. So I was trying to trying to counter what was going to be this massive chalk. But at the end of the day, it got there anyway. I mean, he struck, he he struck out the side, bases loaded, no out. You know how hard that is to do. I know it's I mean, crazy. And then it was then then uh, he gave up like eight hits. I mean, he didn't. It's this was kind of sick. I mean, he didn't have like the greatest game, but still, you know, those that that K upside's rough, man. <laughs> it's kind yeah, of uh, out, when you strike out eleven every every day. It's uh, I foolishly that was one of my bad bets. My my other bets all got, got there yesterday, but it was my bad. Hey, bet I thought I thought you were going to be. I, I have a feeling that you kind of needed to dodge the loser because I I didn't know what you ended up doing, but when the when the Phillies got off to a freaking flying start there, I remember you liked them a little bit. Yeah, I played I them with the Dodgers them. a little bit. Okay, so, so everything sort of worked worked well enough. Not didn't didn't quite get all the way there, but it was uh, it was it, it you know it, it was about having the right guys, obviously, and uh, and that was key. It wasn't about just just having the right team. Everybody had the Dodgers. It was all right. right. So so you're saying that tonight's going to be a little different. I I would love to know how. how well, okay. The reason I'm saying it's different is because we have a million games to choose from. The truth is that obviously the Dodgers are going to end up chalking. Well, especially however, after. however, the the problem is they're facing their nemesis. They, they they are they're uh you've got the Chad Cool, are arguably the worst the worst other pitcher in baseball behind Arena. <laughs> oh, for, only only pitched the complete game shutout against the Dodgers. Against of course, the Dodgers. last time they went against each other. That's all. I know, but Arena had a similar type of thing. So yeah, it is probably going to be Dodger Dodger focused. But I do think there's a lot of other options. But 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 what's what's cool about this slate is there's like all these like top tier high salary pitchers that yep. you want to play. You yep. know. And and then I'm like, okay, so it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to play the Dodgers with these. And then I'm looking at they're still freaking pr- 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 price Muncie under 4K. They're still pricing Matt Bellinger under 4K. I mean, come on, it's <laughs> ridiculous. Like, yeah, it's really ridiculous in, in in that stadium that they're not. I mean, at least they they're consistent. You know what I mean? They decided they're not going to raise people's prices for this year for, yeah. for 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 the Colorado trips. So they're not doing it. But it's very it's very weird. All right, let's get into it. Um, Let's go game by game here. Uh, first off, we have St. Louis and Washington. And you before know, I do, before I do that, let me let me. Um, oh, let's share, share your screen. Yeah, share my screen. Yeah, let's do um, take advantage of the fact that we can do it. Yeah. Okay. So St. Louis, Washington. I see a little cloud. Uh, is is that is, is there weather concerns in anything that today? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll I'll go through that as we go. As of right now, that actually does look like it is somewhat concerning. Um, I'm just going to see real quickly what what the what the bad weather things it, it just looks concerning as of right now probably going to be okay but we'll, we'll we'll probably have to check on that one later on okay I don't really know what else to say about well it. we're going to have to check on that later on because I mean not to get right into it but um 
I'll just come right out. I mean, as far as you, when you rank stuff by, by, by one of my metrics, my modified stack score, whatever, I have St. Louis as number one uh, value stack on the board. So mm. um, we'll just start with that on a hundred game slate. I, I didn't expect it to be the first game with a little cloud soul, cloud soul on it here, but um, uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a weather game that I'm going to have to take a, keep, keep an eye on. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like that. Uh, I, I don't know why I feel you, you invented this guy, but I'll, I'll just keep playing Nolan Gorman when I, when I, uh, when I have an opportunity to play St. Louis guys. Hey, why not? Why not? Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I really don't have much interest in Mikolas. There's just way too many options on this on today's slate for mm-hmm. me to play him. And I'm not really getting to Washington. Yeah, I'm high on St. Louis as well. Um, I think that they're a, a perfectly natural, like could win the slate type of pivot from the from the Dodgers. Um and then you have like, you know, I think that I don't think you're going to see especially I think you see medium int- interest in Carlson and O'Neill. Like you're probably talking about like low 10 percent for like the best hitters on their team. And then guys like Arenado, I think are going to be much lower on than that because it's going to be hard to play Goldschmidt and Arenado. So I, I do think you're going to get low enough ownership to where this is definitely appealing. And I, I, I like the spot against Sanchez. It is a little you know, you've got l- like very little winds, five miles an hour blowing in from right center and you know, again, we're gonna have to check on the weather later today, but I, I, I do think this is a good spot. It, it, you know, the nationals with the weather always freak me out because they, sometimes when we look like the games are totally fine and it never rains a drop, they've actually canceled games before, yeah. but as in terms of the actual game, I like it quite a bit. So I, I am on the St. Louis side of this and I, uh, I support, uh, I, I support the St. Louis idea. So I'm totally in on that. And then we're going to we're going to need, you know, by the way, to get a uh, well, we won't need a quite yet, but we're going to need a Mrs. Sheets report or something for this Yankee game that is coming up in just a minute. But uh, oh, I hope that there's no weather concerns here. The, the, well, we'll get to the Yankee one, but uh, but let's talk. Let's talk Pittsburgh and Philadelphia first. Who, uh, who is this? Who is B. Falter? Bailey Falter? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, the not, young I'm, guy. I'm not getting I'm not getting any of this. I don't think. But let me just see. Um I don't think he is the worst play in the world. <laughs> Ooh, that's interesting. Well, um, let's, let me let, let me look at this. So, first of all, pitching, uh, hitting wise, um, not really seeing either. Uh, Philly a little bit. I see Philly a little bit as being in play. Um, and then you want to talk to me about this falter guy? Go for it. A young guy. It's got some talent. He's been around actually a little. I don't, I got to double check exactly how young he is. I just, I feel like he's, he's been a young guy and I feel like I've heard the name forever, but he's 5.9 K facing one of the weakest offenses in baseball. And he, you know, his, they, they've sort of stretched him out a little bit. He hasn't been great or anything like that. The strikeout numbers per inning are not exactly what you'd want to see, but he's 5.9 K just a guy to, I mean, look, a long shot guy to consider in the one fifties, as far as I'm concerned right now, it's not a priority of any kind does have a four and a half K prop with the best pitchers umpire in baseball and Bill Miller. Um, and it's 5.9 K with a 4.5 K cap K prop. I'm always going to have a little bit of interest in guys like that. Um, on the other side, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to play Quintana, but, um, I don't think that he's a bad play just right on its face for 6,900 against even mm-hmm. a tough team like Philly. Again, you get Bill Miller there. Philly's only got a 4.1 implied run total, which I, I accurately yesterday snuck out that that was a little bit of a, of a bad, a bad total that they had. Um, it didn't make sense to me why they weren't at five or above just because they're playing in Pittsburgh. But yeah, I think both pitchers are viable uh, in long, large field stuff, but I think that falter is the only one I would probably end up using. So the bill, bill Miller's a, a pitcher's umpire you said extreme pitcher's umpire. Yeah. He's the most. So- that sucks because I really I, I think Phillies would be in play. Um, the only problem is Quintana never gets gives up doesn't oh, ever right? lose slates. Like I I think he had one this year where he did get really rocked around, but I, it was in Colorado. Yeah, it was last. It was in Colorado, and even in that game, he didn't give up a home run. He's only given up four home runs this season in in eighteen starts. Um, really, really hard to stack against guys like that uh, successfully. Did um what's his name uh. Brady Singer win the slate last night? He was amazing. Uh, he Not enough people played him for him to win enough of it, but he did win some of the big yeah. tournaments. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Casey in, against New York, I, I don't I, – I can't imagine Chris, the Chris Bubick can pull off, you know, the Brady Singer, Chris Bubick uh, double uh, – Double whammy. Double whammy. Um, I, I definitely feel as though the Cole is hmm, – do I have him as my top play? 
Yeah, I, I have Cole as the top play. Um, although, I mean, you know, he's going to be owned through the freaking roof. Um, mm-hmm. So, and then there are guys, <laughs> there are guys with ceilings on the slate. So, um, I, I, I have no problem going, getting underweight him. Uh, he's, but he is going to be, I mean, listen, t- say who the best play on the slate is. I think it's Cole. <laughs> but uh, yeah. there, there are guys you can play. Um, let's put it that way. Um, but 10 4 is guy he probably should be 12k in this spot <laughs> gets the case just, the it's weird they stopped making guys that expensive anymore yeah um they, he should be 12k here he's just underpriced um, yeah he's gonna strike out 10 guys and they'll probably give up a home run to michael taylor or somebody like that and, and <laughs> sounds about right and get 30 fantasy points you know what i mean like and he's gonna get the win what, what are they three to one i mean it's gotta be a huge favorite yeah right? minus 380 i mean so you get the four points 10 straight i mean he's gonna get 30 right i mean so yeah. he's gonna He's probably the best play. <laughs> um, what about the Yankees? I mean, look, look. Whenever Coors is on the slate, you know the Yankees are going to be playable as a pivot, and especially coming off of a shutout. Or did they get sh- actually shut out? I, I don't know. I don't, was- I don't remember what the final score was of that game, to be honest with you. Yeah. We, well, you know what? We could we could at least be diligent enough to find out the final score of the game. They did win one nothing actually in the end. Okay. Yeah. Um, and with the judge hitting a home run for said run, there it is. <laughs> it's unbelievable. They, they, they really have the Yankees offense without judge lately has been basically non-existent. It's got 39 home runs. It's really ridiculous. Um, I mean, and, and I mean, literally he's homering like at least he, I mean, he's had six home runs in his last seven games and the Yankees are scoring one, two, three, three, six, five, seven, two. I mean, they just don't, aren't scoring runs and yeah. judge is still hitting home runs. So Little, little worrisome that uh, you know, just having one of those bad downturns. Obviously, no Stanton in the lineup, but I'm very happy to go right back to the Yankees here. I think that they're a really good option. I don't think that they are this my next favorite. Uh, St. Louis and the Yankees are probably going to be somewhere between three and five for me. Um, okay. But I, I do think that they're very viable. Um, Donaldson, Judge, and I think they're going to get some ownership as well. I think that Lemayhew and Glaber, because their prices won't be owned very much. I don't think anyone's going to play Ben Attendi in the lefty lefty, and uh, and and I think you could you could did, play all those guys. Did Ben Attendi get in last night? Mm-hmm. Okay, I was wondering how he did against the old team. The whole thing. Uh, the he was zero for four. Okay, but he'll be fine. Yeah, um, he just doesn't have. Just a reminder: he can pr- probably have power in Yankee Stadium, but he doesn't have any r- real power in general. Speaking of uh, speaking of booking booking a four point win here, um, you get Alec Manoa. What's what's his price? What's 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 what are their odds at home against Detroit? Um, yes, yeah, so their odds at home are. Let me just grab that real quick. It's, God forbid uh, Detroit. They're, 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 they're even bigger favorites. They're minus three eighty two. Yeah, I mean, and yep. I don't even know if there are going to be Detroit guys out because of COVID. I don't I don't know what's what's happening over there, but um, in Toronto, but I, I this is going to be another ten to one game. I mean, it's just going to be. They're just going to get slaughtered. That's <laughs> that's the way it's going to be. Yep. And uh, Manoa, as usual, like you know, he's he doesn't like you know you were you were talking about this before in the last couple of starts that he's actually you know become a smarter pitcher mm-hmm. in his season. You know, maybe maybe costing him some of that you know high strikeout upside type you know type uh, profile, but really just being a better pitcher as or you know uh, because of it. But he's safe as they can come, man. In this spot, I mean, you. you you book book me twenty points like 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 nothing with upside to thirty I guess you know and and put him with Cole somehow I mean this is this this looks pretty uh this looks like a pretty pretty chalky way to start if you can get and then you play those 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 cheap Dodgers I mentioned like the Muncie and, and Bellinger um, yeah I don't know I, I think Manoa looks like a really really strong play now there are a lot of play, listen this is only two pitchers there are one to do it's like it's, probably five more pitchers I'm going to be interested in here. It, it, there's a lot of good pitchers. And, and these are yeah. two, the two that we've talked about are, are elite. Um, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then also uh, from a hitting perspective, just like you said for the Yankees, I mean, Toronto, you know, Toronto hits it. So if you can hit it on a slate with the, with the, when Coors, I mean, you're, you're in play. So uh, you're in play. Uh, I mean, who uh, BGO, even Springer, Vlad, T Oscar, Kirk, if you want to do that. Um, yeah. So Toronto and, and, and Manoa. Yeah. Um, I I'm curious what they're going to do with Garcia. Cause so I love Manoa, uh, but I mean, yeah, you're going to hear me say that about a number of pitchers today. I love Manoa. I love Cole. Um, I'm very interesting, interested to see what they let, they let this kid do 
pitching wise because he's not a top prospect. He's a 27 year old minor leaguer. Um, he's if, if if we think he's got a little bit of a leash and it's not just a full bullpen game, I think Toronto is my favorite stack. And even if it is a bullpen game <laughs> with Detroit in this situation, I feel and also some of their guys aren't there. Um, I just feel like we should. I, I feel like Toronto is the, the better, the best of the stacks we've talked about. I, what's weird is I don't see them being owned much, and I think it's because of the prices. Um, but I, I think that they are super elite, and I would be heavy, heavy, heavy on Toronto today. I, uh, I'm gonna just keep going right back to this. Well, they're the funnest team to stack because, well, they're frustrating at times because they'll strike. You know, they'll they 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 have some some. I don't even know if they have some weak spots is the right way to put it, but they'll you just feel like they should be hitting more home runs than they do and then you look up and they just they, that's how they score runs they hit home runs and i want to stack teams that hit home runs in general they end up lately being under owned for some reason especially since the 28 run game i would have thought they would have been much chalkier on a couple of these slates so i think toronto may end up being my favorite stack of the night um along with the dodgers but i might just play them over the dodgers if, if these ownerships are anything real for what it's worth the early runs ha- sheets has got the true dfs ownership is uh about double what everybody else's is. And I think that's right. I, I mean, or double what Saber Sim is and double what Roto Grinders is, I should say. Um, I think they are going to be higher owned than they're currently being projected. And I don't think it'll be high owned, but I think they're going to be like, you'll see a couple guys, you know, creep into the double digit ownership. That's what my guess is. But I, I think they're an elite, elite stack and uh, definitely a team that I'm going to be very heavy on tonight. All right. Moving on. Uh, Cleveland, Tampa. Um, Two good pitchers in this one. You have two good pitchers in this one. Um, And uh, so I think Bieber is the better play, but, but uh, absolutely, you know, with, without ownership being considered, but, um, and, and I I have him in a very, you know, reasonable 20% ownership projection. Um, I think that makes sense. Um, I think he'll be higher, but yeah. You think so? Uh, Probably a little bit, not much. And then, uh, Springs, I have him at under 10. Um, just because I don't, I don't even think you need to pay that. You know what I mean? Look, yeah, look and also, I, like, he's been struggling a little bit. Cleveland doesn't strike out. Look what I just did. I mean, I put Cole and Manoa with, like, I started with Muncie, Bellinger, Lux. I mean, like, you could even I – mean, I'm just this is not to build a lineup. This is to gauge how popular some guys be. You could even put in, say, Trey Turner and still be, like, in perfectly fine shape. You yeah, you're I mean? totally fine. Absolutely. So I, I don't know if people are going to pay down for these people are going to need to pay down for these pitchers at all. Um, so, so, so uh, if, with that being the case, they're going to be very low on. So if you want to take a shot with Springs to as your way to be different from what's going to be a pretty easy build, um, then I I'll, I'll give you the go ahead for that. Um, as far as hitting goes, don't think I got to either of these pitchers. I, I, I mean, these hitting, this hitting of these hitters, I, I have no reason to. Yeah. Um, I have no reason to get to the hitters either. I, I don't think this is the right slate for Springs. He's going to have some, some weird outlier performances and, and he's, you know, he's, it just doesn't make sense to play him with a similar price to these other guys. You have Bieber with a seven and a half K prop. You've got Cole with an eight and a half K prop. Manoa's only got a five and a half K prop. So I actually think that, I think that Bieber and Cole are the natural build for cash games. And I think that Bieber is just a, a fantastic play. Um, uh, that's pretty much it. I don't really have a, you know, he's, he's, he hasn't been quite the same and he had, you know, the, uh, didn't he have the injury earlier in the year? No, he just, he just struck. He just hasn't, you know, been quite as consistent as he's been in, in the past, but I am very high on him today. Uh, I'm not afraid of Tampa's lineup. They're always a little pesky, but um, I, I think this is a really good spot for Bieber. So that's pretty much all I have for this game. Okay. If you were playing a cash game, you'd prefer him over Manoa? I think the strikeout upside is higher. The safety is probably higher with Manoa. It's really close between those two. I don't know. I would have to think about that one. I agree. Yeah. Um, Woodruff in Boston. This is uh, something you don't see every day. Well, here's the unowned of the guys uh, who are at the top. Everybody else that I'm looking at is seeming to get some ownership. I don't think anybody in the world is playing Woodruff. And he has a seven and a half K prop, just like these other guys do. He's got elite stuff. Uh, He really pitched well right before the break. And I think that he is a terrific pivot option. But again, it's, it's hard because I do prefer Cole Manoa and Bieber, but I'm definitely going to mix him in just in the name of low ownership. Um, 
And and then I think you get into a, a, a funny spot on, do we play Tampa Bay or could you make an argument even for this Bello character as another really weird spend down if you wanted to get real? I don't think I'm going to spend down for pitching on this slate. I just am throwing it out there. And you've, then you've got a long relief with Davis. I'm just sort of throwing it out there. because But but Bello is probably not going to pitch long enough anyway. Um, well, I have I have him being the, the, the long reliever. Okay, yeah, Bello would be the long reader. Excuse me, yeah, Davis would start. That's right. I, I got it backwards. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I'm going to stack Milwaukee today. I don't want the bullpen game. I don't – I'm okay with it. I'm just personally probably not going to do it because there's other teams I like better. But they're they, – you know, I don't mind if you want to mix in a little mini stack or something. I just – they're expensive. The other stacks I like that are expensive I like better. So I, I'm just a little bit lower on, on Milwaukee, and maybe that's a mistake. They get a big – you know, a nice, a nice stadium to play in. It's 84 degrees with wind blowing out to right center. They're on my list, but they're not like, uh, I don't know. I feel like they're going to end up on the outside looking in for me. How about you? I don't know. I'd rather play them than some of the other teams. I mean, really? I, I, listen, I don't have them higher than, than Toronto or the Yankees or, or, you know, mm-hmm. we'll get to Atlanta in a minute, but, but I, I can't, I, I can't put anybody else ahead of them really. Uh, so I, 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 I have no problem trying Milwaukee. Um, and, uh, as far as Woodruff goes, I mean, why, why can't he get 30? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Well, the, the answer is he's got a harder matchup than these other teams, these other pitchers, but we've, we've seen this and these pitchers get rolling. doesn't matter who the hell they're playing. You know what yep. I mean? So, so uh, I think he's going to, I mean, I'm looking at a, I mean, there's no way he can really be 5% owned. I think but, there is because of the other guys in his price range and because of people's fear of Boston and the fact that Boston has a run, t- a run total of 1.2 higher than the teams that the other guys are facing. It just seems like he could be. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I would, I would actually, if I was playing, you know, 50 lineups, something like that, I would force him in, you know, oh, even absolutely. If, even if my projections didn't get him just because I know that he can, he can do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, uh yeah so i'm probably gonna i'm gonna, probably gonna get to milwaukee and uh i might end up getting to woodruff depending on how many lineups. <laughs> yep uh, totally uh totally understand it i think i'm just uh, as we see these stacks as we keep going through the games it's the only reason why i'm not higher on milwaukee because normally i would have some interest there but i i just i you know we get into atlanta next um you take a low strikeout lefty against a team with these righties that just crush, and then you throw an Olsen in the one lefty lefty matchup. What's crazy is this Michael Harris batting is 4,800 batting ninth, and he just seems like he, he's just always doing something, even if he's not in the home run. He's got 15 fantasy points, and you're just like, How did he do it? Oh, he had two walks and a stolen base or something. It's just like, I don't know. He, uh, this is a this is another one of the top stacks, I think, and you have some cheap options like Ozuna. Travis Darno has finally been priced down. Uh, Ronald Acuna is is criminally priced at forty nine hundred. Uh, I honestly think that's one of the biggest misprices I've seen in maybe in the whole time I've played DFS. Like I understand, I don't care about what kind of streak you go through. I don't care what's happening. Uh, this guy, if he gets on base, he's going to steal, and he's got tremendous power. Oh, well, I don't know if he's going to steal tonight against Bumgarner, but tremendous power versus lefties, especially uh atlanta is another premium stack i have them just beneath toronto and then i think that the yankees and and, and blue and uh cardinals would be the next two for me but i i love atlanta here do you, do you think acuna is, is 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 worse of a misprice than like bellinger and muncie yes because acuna is the best fantasy point like when we do this back and we look back for this five-year period acuna will have scored the most fantasy points per game okay. of any player because of the speed power combination right and and he's just that good um, so yeah, I just think because of the speed side of it, anytime he's under 5k, it's, I mean, he's basically like, it's, it's rare for him to have games usually that are less than double digit fantasy points. Although he's, he's having like a rough year and he's still one of the fantasy point leaders, you know, can you get to, um, can you get to write on this slate? I don't think I can. I think it's just the wrong slate, but I'll tell you what, you could, you could play your chalky, whatever, and, and play right and Woodruff as your two pitching combinations yeah. as, as a direct exact pivot price-wise and all off of uh, Garrett Cole and, uh, and Shane Bieber. So I think that's, I think it's, I, he's, he's just going to be a guy who I mix in, in my very large field tournament stuff. Uh, not, not going to be a priority of any kind for me. So, so, so I think again, if I didn't mention it, uh, you know, I, I, I agree with you. I do like Atlanta. I mean, I have, I have Atlanta Yankees, Toronto as, as my top, as the top non-Dodger stacks, as far as just, you know, who's going to score the most points. Um, mm-hmm. 
Uh, so yeah. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Um, all right. Then we get the cheap option. And there we next. go. And the, and the question really is, what do we do? Because do you, do you just stack Oakland? I, mean, I, I, I guess you don't need don't to know. go that far, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, yeah. Listen, we're just talking. It's a 1230 PM. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I you do have like they are. Nah, really he's not gonna be. He's not gonna be chalky enough. You know what I mean? Like not uh, quite enough, but but they are really cheap. I mean, like if you want to, if, if you ended up on a Seth Brown at two point nine. I mean, look, Lance Lynn is completely elite against righties. Against lefties, he struggles. Now they don't have enough lefties they can really play that are that serious. They're gonna what they're supposed to play three and or four, I guess one with one being a switch hitter. Um, that that seems like a you know against Lance Lynn, we're used to seeing like six seven lefties for any team that can run them out there if you if you're going to play a bunch of righties and then bad lefties 6.8 is too cheap the question is will we need it um maybe 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 certain builds will but i think i think lance lynn is completely in play here i actually think he could end up having a score that's similar to some of the top guys and you're saving a ton here with him so um i like the idea of spending up on this slate but i do think lance lynn deserves at least at least a a shot um, I, I have I have him rated number two overall with, with value yeah. score and stuff like that. Just because you know what I mean. Uh, but as usual with these types of plays, it, it comes down to whether you need to play them or not. Um, and I get I, I guess so. I mean, I guess if you really want to play guys from the Dodgers with guys from Toronto or the Yankees, for example, um, then yeah, you do need to put to, to pay down a little bit for pitching. Um, if you wanted to play kind of cheaper guys as your Dodger compliments then uh, you don't have to. So, yeah, Lynn is definitely, uh, you know, rates is a really, really good value for me. Um, I just also feel as though those lineups that that do try to pay down for pitching are the ones where he really – I mean, he really is going to be chalky in there. You know, mm-hmm. I wish we could find a – you know, I, I think I do have – I mean, a pivot, uh, which maybe we could talk about in a few games maybe. But um, yeah, so uh, Lynn certainly rates to be a good play for me. And it's the question of how you want to build. Mm-hmm. What about the White Sox? You like that at all? It just, I don't need to try to find ways to play extra guys on this slate, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. To be honest with you, if this was a smaller slate, I would be talking about Caprillion. Um, Ooh, I actually think he's okay. the better play at 5,400 than probably the other guys I mentioned. Ah, maybe not. Um, but like the White Sox are very hit or miss offense. They have sort of found themselves a little bit, but they're fine. Um, I, I don't have any issue with it. It's just not, I just have other stacks that I like better. I have them sort of similar to Milwaukee, um, but just way behind Atlanta and Toronto and the Yankees and Cardinals. So, so now you have two other guys that could score 30. Yeah. Um, so Seattle and Houston, you're going to get, ver- I mean, when am I going to get this for? I get four. I have like Verlander is rated as like my 10th best value. You know what I mean? As far as pitching goes, but I know I want to play him. You know what I mean? Like, it's right. like um, and he could be, you know why? Because he can, he could put up 30. You know, I have Robbie Ray, like, I don't even know where he is on my list. And I, and he could score 32. This is that, that one scares me. I don't know if I can do yeah. that. But, yeah, that's a, I but, mean, that would be a very low owned one. It's going to be one percent owned. I mean, you know, whatever. But right. I will say this: that that on the other side of the uh, the other side of the equation, Houston can certainly put up ten in this spot. Yeah, I know. Um, I wish this was a small slate game. Yeah, right. Exactly. And then we could get low owned Houston at nothing. Oh, yeah, okay. but I'll buy. Listen, if if I play, like I said, if I play a bunch and I get to some of them, I I won't be upset at all. Um, I probably won't, you know, force force them in or whatever. But you, they can, they, they got the best way I can put it. They can score 10. I mean, they just can um, in this spot. So uh, yeah. uh, probably probably not going to be able to do the Robbie Ray thing unless, in, listen, if I run a Saberson build and it gives me a couple of percentage, a couple of lineups, I'll, I'll leave it in. Um, same with the uh, Houston side of this. So I'm not going to force either of that in. I think Verlander, I kind of want to make sure I have a couple of lineups with. I mean, just because, again, like you're going to need 30 out of your top pitcher tonight. And who's to say that one of those other guys are definitely going to do it, you know? So, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I'm, I, 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 Berlander might be – we can talk about this. Like, how, where is he ranked in righty starters lifetime in history? You know what I mean? Oh, like, he's way up there, yeah. He's up there. I mean, you know, yeah. he's up there. So, uh, hey, he's still pitching well. So, 
Give me, I'll, I'll take a shot. He just put up 32 against this team the last time there they is. faced them. Usually there that is. that's I don't love the back to back stuff, but like it's been, you know, that was before the break. Um, yeah, uh, was that before the break? It might have been the first game. Back. He's got 30 points three of the last four games. I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to argue that he's not a good play. Um, he he does fall a little bit behind the other guys for me, but he is still one of the top four of the guys we mentioned so far for me with Bieber, Manoa, Cole. Um, so he would be he would be the next one. I don't think I'm going to get to Robbie Ray tonight. You do have an extreme hitters umpire in this game. If there's if you want to look for a deciding factor of why not to play somebody, maybe that could be something you look at. Um, I think it. I think with guys like JV on the mound, it doesn't really matter that much because they're going to they're going to get their bulk of their calls anyway. So it's it's I wouldn't worry about it too much anyway. I like JV and I and I think that Robbie Ray is probably outside looking in, but I will probably throw him into one lineup out of the Fem I, I, I would just like to I, I would lottery. just like to say that Justin Verlander has a 1.86 ERA and a 0.88 whip and he is 39. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. I would also like to remind everybody that Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer were on the same team. That's the, uh, yeah, they had, I mean, they, they were, they were loaded on the up. Tigers. Not, not to mention that they had the other guy who finished uh second inside this for the Cy Young while they were all there. The six, eight guy. What's his name? I can't. Oh, remember. right. That's the guy we ended up beating up on late in his career. Um, All right. You want to talk, you want to get, get into this Dodgers situation? Yeah. I, mean, I don't think this is going to be, I, it'll be owned. Don't get me wrong. They'll be the highest owned team. I don't think it's going to be the same ownership that everybody else, you know, actually the projections don't even have it to be as high owned. I I'm curious where it ends up. I, I, I think that, you know, I don't know, actually, I, I cannot picture really people are going to play 30% of anybody on the slate. I guess it's going to happen. Um, I don't know. She's, I, I keep thinking like there's so many other options today. It doesn't, I mean, oddly enough, Chad Cool has been in his three starts career against the Dodgers has actually been pretty good. Um, I don't take much, I don't take that to mean much, except for if I'm trying to fade somebody. I think that playing the bottom of the Dodger order, and then we need to see what the Dodger lineup is. It's it's really hard not to have interest in them at their prices, especially. Um, well, Jake Lamb, Gavin Lux, uh, Cody Bellinger, uh, just being the cheapies. And, and they're the ones who, who you know, th- these guys can, can get it done the same in cores. So I don't think you need to save even at pitching to, to play these guys, which is going to make them just really easy to get in. So maybe they actually do end up with that ownership because of these cheap options. I like the Dodgers um, obviously for what it's worth, but I don't have any problem not making them my primary stack or making them my highest stone. I think Atlanta and Toronto are close enough where I could play them at lower ownership and, uh, and get there that way. I think you faded out just a little bit, but oh, sorry about that. No, I'm not. I think who's the other Tiger? David Price was he the the other guy? What about him? Oh, oh no, 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 he wasn't the other. He he was on the team too. But then there was a uh, why can't I think of the big? I'll remember it later on. The big righty's okay. name. He was six foot eight. Okay. Um, had a couple of really good years. Then just got crushed later on in his career. Um, um all right. So I think the Dodgers are the the top play. Um, with the same, same, same. Okay, so here are the different issues. The different issues is that there are just more teams tonight, as you were as you were mentioning. You know, yeah, and, guess, and teams in good spots. Yeah. Yesterday, where there's an eight, eight or nine game slate. Tonight, it's 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 a full slate. Um, and they're just they're, like you said, there are a lot of teams with with good up with good spots. Um, I also, it's like kind of gross to say, but I I I I do think, and there's like literally nothing to back this up, but 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 I think that they're is I don't know the maybe maybe cool is not that maybe not the not the worst and 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 maybe just maybe you know the Dodgers will be thinking twice I don't know because of the complete game shutout I don't, I don't know. just trying to th- come up with anything you know yeah. and, and and the fact is the Dodgers no matter how many times I, I talk about it they're just you know they're going to be the best player at least mm-hmm. um, I'm not getting to before we forget I'm not getting to Arias at 9800 uh, at Colorado and however. I am not playing Colorado either. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm not going to get to that. And, you know, same as usual. It depends on what lineup you get. You get McKinstry again at, at whatever his price was. And then you get Lux and, you know, you get these Dodger lefties under 4K. I mean, you know, it's just, uh, mm-hmm. they're just smash plays. Um, mm-hmm. So as usual, 
you want to stack them, make sure you complement them with something less chalky and or or with uh, some of these pitching options that are that are not Cole Manoa um, uh, Bieber, right? And, and then maybe maybe you can get some stuff done. But uh, yeah, they're the best play that they're, again makes it a very very difficult GPP slate. It, it yeah it, they they are but I, I I'm okay with you know maybe not going as high on them as I was yesterday uh, where I felt they were completely unfadeable. Uh, for what it's worth, uh, I do. Th- I'm not going to probably get to Colorado, but if you wanted to play CJ Cron, both pitch type wise and actual, you know, only 20 at bats, but he's had success off of various. Um, I don't mind any of these bats, especially especially Cron or Chris Bryant, but I just think that there's other things I'm probably going to do with my builds than that. Okay, now so now we get to this next game, and just just when we were saying, well, it was a good run from Martin Perez, now he's back to reality. That's two games in a row with 20 plus fantasy points back yep. in business. Yeah. <laughs> back in business. And he's, and he's against a kind of a weak uh, angel team nowadays. Mm-hmm. Definitely the wrong slate um, to try it. But I just thought uh, going to point that out. It's the wrong okay. slate until you get that DK alert that says Martin Perez has a no hitter after seven and right. after seven or whatever, after eight. Right. Um, how, how, however, however, okay. If you want, if you want to try something, I'm gonna completely like you know reach the tight end stream against the Giants or whatever. I'll continue to stream against Texas. Um, and I I, I might give Sandoval a shot here at 7,500. Just mm-hmm. just just something to do. I I have him I have him rated really really strong actually, um tonight. And so if you're looking for something different to do, I'm totally into it. I mean it's a really really good matchup because Texas stinks. Um and uh. That's probably what I'll recommend. I'll play Sandoval, and that's probably it. I actually do like Sandoval a little bit as well, but I just don't think in real re- realistically I'm I'm going to end up paying down for pitching enough. Yep. If I did, it would probably be a Sandoval and Lynn combination or the two crazy 5K guy p- plays. Um, but I just I just can't quite find enough reason until they start pricing some of these teams like they should be um, yep. to to have to do it. So. And, and and we've got guys in the next game that are going to make some sense as well. Um, well, one not guy, to me- not to mention the last game. <laughs> it's it's pretty wild. I mean, this is like they stuck us. I mean, there's so many times we could have desperately used these pitchers on some other slates. And as we <laughs> said here, and here and here's another guy who can get thirty. You know, what right. I mean? <laughs> and Blake oh. Snell can get thirty at eighty three hundred for openers. Yeah, I think I mean Joe Ryan can get thirty two. By the way, Joe Ryan can get thirty. Or Blake um, Snell can Blake Snell can really get thirty. Yeah, um, yeah, I think Snell is an interesting play here. Um, and he's going to get owned a little bit too. Yeah, he should. Yeah. He would be my fifth guy, probably of the guys we've mentioned, just because the upside is there, and you have a team that can be a little bit over anxious at, at the plate with Minnesota, um, which is exactly what you want for Blake Snell because he has trouble working through innings. <laughs> um, well, if, if if he pitches six innings, you're getting 20 something fantasy points most of the time here, unless they're li- literally hitting him in the sixth or something. He just has a hard time getting to those innings because he ends up, you know, 10 pitch at bats left and right. It's very frustrating. He's a guy I hate watching when, uh when I play him, when I roster him, but I do think that Blake Snell is definitely a, definitely a strong play today. And if we're thinking about Sandoval versus Snell, it just feels like a better idea to me to play Snell. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. And, and then the, and the, here's what's interesting is, is I have Snell rated similarly to actually to Manoa. I mean, again, different prices or whatever. And, and I think, I think, you know, in, in, in one sense, like Snell's probably the better GPP play, um, better GPP. Play. How about like the worst cash play? You know what I mean? Like I, 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 I think that Manoa is like a lot to win that game. You know what I mean? And he's going to put up a good performance. He's going to get 20. And he'll get 30 some percentage of the time. I think Snell is not a lot to do anything like ever, um, but he can put up 35. You know I mean? mm-hmm. um, so uh, maybe Snell is even a better GPP play than Manoa. I don't know. Um, but remember, you, you, you can you can get those games where he, like he said, he can't find the plate um, and you're, you're, you're struggling to beg for 15 fantasy points in five innings, you know? Um, right. So, uh, yeah, but he's definitely on the board. What, what about Ryan? You mentioned him. I can't imagine getting to him with all these other options, but, um, but, but why not? I mean, it's, it's, it's just, an, it's another option. Uh, another guy who's got good stuff, facing a team who's never faced him before. He's got a wide range of outcomes. 
Um, I think he's, I think he's fine. I don't think I'm going to do it, but I think he's completely fine. If you did want to go that direction. Um, so if, if you did, if you didn't like any of that, I mean, is, is, again, we talked about this with the San Francisco guy last night. I mean, anything wrong with Alex Cobb at 6,700 against Chicago? I mean, you, you really have to play Lance Lynn? No, you could, I mean, there's, I don't think there's going to be a whole bunch, a whole big difference between the two of them. Yeah. Um, Against against the Cubs, I think he's certainly in play. Um, but again, we have what is that like nineteen pitchers? So I'm just gonna I'm gonna fine tune this at the end and say that I, I think that's just too. We just it's just too many guys that we we're considering here. And well, well, we, but 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 you were talking about maybe a double pay down thing. Maybe you play Cobb yeah. and Lynn. You could you could play Cobb and Lynn. Um, it just feels like you're giving up so much upside. I know, on this I know, I know. But I hear you though. Like I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, well, you what you're gonna need to make that work is is usually I find that when I, when you you listen, you play these types of builds more than I do. That when you play these builds, you're not really doing it because you think those pitchers are gonna come close to those other guys, but you're doing it because the hitters you're getting access to are just really going to you're really not ball. like, I don't even agree with that anymore. Like, I okay. don't think that's true when you have guys who are two K in the middle of these lineups that you're trying to play. Okay. Like specifically, if you wanted to stack Atlanta with Toronto, yeah, that would be tough. But like the Dodgers, you have three guys who literally right. make it so you can do whatever you want to do. Right. So uh, it, it, there's no reason, you know, and, and, and they're all legitimate, you know, guys. I mean, Jake Lamb is not a great hitter or anything, but 2.1, and you mix him with Bellinger and Lux, and it's like, okay, well, I don't need to worry about spending sixty seven hundred on pitchers. I can double spend that play the Dodgers and Blue Jays and be totally fine with it. And the Dodgers and Blue Jays are my most common combination. That's probably what's going to happen for me again tonight. Um, I don't see any reason to get away from it on this slate. Um, but I, I look, I, I get the I get the argument for the other thing. I will like to spend down, but usually I like to do it on guys with ups. And I think Lance Lynn has the upside to really be it be one of the top five scoring pitchers on a slate. I think you, I think you really do want that on this kind of a slate because it's hard for Cobb to get 30. Lance Lynn c- can get 30 still like or 25. Um, so I, I, I want to focus on the, 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 you know, the main ones. And for me, that's going to be heavy Cole Manoa Bieber with some Verlander and Snell. And then it's a bunch of guys mixing in, probably starting off with Lance Lynn, uh, Lance Lynn, uh sandoval Cobb are all fine bailey falter if you want to go with that crazy spend down thing i don't think that's logical on this slate but i do think that it would be on other slates and if they price the dodgers like they used to and everybody was 6500 or something like that then sure then then spending down on these guys would make perfect sense to me i just you put you put the three cheapos and, and you look you could throw a lot you could throw a throw throw lamb into the mix with this lineup and then you've got like 6k left per player you can't even pay for them right <laughs> like you I mean right. or if you play lamb instead of one of these guys um which is what i would probably end up doing because muncie is just he's been aggravating anyway um so i've got the i've got the dodgers uh toronto and atlanta as my top three followed by new york st louis milwaukee and chicago and i just named my pitching sheets anything else you want to highlight before we get out of here yeah i guess if i had to pick right now where i would go it'd probably be milwaukee or st louis um just that they're they they are just seem to be the pivots off of those pivots that so that's and that's what i kind of like to do so for me it would either be the dodgers with you know pitchers other than the ones that are a great place right? mm-hmm. um or 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 maybe take a shot with milwaukee or st louis something like that and the other thing about st louis is interesting is, is if you look at the um at the lobbies here in st louis it still shows both those guys out because it hasn't updated, right? It says uh, Goldschmidt and Arianato. Mm-hmm. So what's happening, they're not actually showing up in like the initial projections um, and they will obviously. But um, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so th- th- that's what I would do. I, I, again, I have to watch for, for, um, for weather in that game, which is. Yeah. I think better. with weather like today, if it is still like even any chance at all later on, I think you kind of just ignore those games. Like if you, if you think it's like going to play 75% of the time, I still think I'm just ignoring those games because there's just too many options. There. Well, and the other thing that we uh-huh. that you alluded to, which we never addressed, is is it true that there's um that there's um weather concerns in New York? There's weather con- well, there's slight weather con- storms, but it it's, it it's slight weather concerns, but not 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 as bad as Atlanta and Washington. Atlanta and Washington, which has the St. Louis in it, seem to be the biggest concerns. And then there's always a chance that. 
Colorado because the way that they, the way that it's shaped that always gets these weird late storms. So that's that's a possibility as I well. I actually do see here. I, I'm getting like some some thunderstorm warnings here. Okay, All right, we got we got to watch this one. Okay. Uh, I called it my, the, 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 that Homo was going to make the cut. By the way, I'm happy about that. But like I, I said today, I said that uh, he was he was he was looking bad yesterday, really bad, and uh, he rallied around today. And oh, what's, look, what's it going to be? Four or five? It's it's going to be no, it's going to be three or four. It's seventy eight percent three and four nineteen percent four. Oh okay. So and I'm very happy with uh with my you know my core plays of Cam Young, Adam Scott, and Sahith Thigala all uh, right now very very briefly uh in at the top of the leaderboard. So yeah, uh, maybe it's not as bad of a golf slate as I thought it was going to be for me. So anyway, Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? Nope, I'm out for tonight. Okay. Um, uh, good luck everybody, and uh, let's uh hey listen, we Bobby and I both made money yesterday. Hopefully you guys did too. And let's, let's keep that rolling into the weekend. Keep on yes. the lookout. I have all kinds of sports uh, coming this weekend between the MMA tomorrow and every NASCAR and LOL slate you can imagine. So good luck to everybody. Awesome. Good luck, everybody. All right, later, Bobby.